my name's Nate, and welcome to another Photo Player Friday. I'm working on returning this Style 15 back to its original form and function after someone tried turning it into a kazoo. <coughs> Today we'll be looking at the harp guitar feature of the Style 15. To my knowledge, this feature was not offered on larger photo players. While this Style 15 was the smallest offered by the American Photo Player Company, and therefore has the fewest features, someone added controls, or a tab rail, from a much larger machine. Not only does it look dumb, but it is. Unfortunately, the original tab rail is long gone. But wait! Summer of last year, I received a very generous 300 pound donation of orphaned photo player parts. These parts originally belonged to a Style 15, and among these parts was an original tab rail. It was such a gift to receive this donation, especially this tab rail, and being able to put an orphan part back into service on a machine is especially rewarding. But, uh, what the heck is a harp guitar? This was a somewhat common attachment in home player pianos and other automatic music machines. It consists of movable tabs tipped with wood or metal that engage with the piano hammers and create a tinny sound. <laughs> I've seen this effect referred to as a ukulele, harp, and mandolin in other machines. It's relatively straightforward to construct and gives another voice to the piano. As far as I know, the Style 15 was the only model of American Photo Player to offer this attachment. I'm unsure if my Style 15 ever had this effect or not. There is a rail in there, but I believe it's a muffler rail that someone set up as a mandolin or harp guitar. While this photo player has been through so many owners and seen some very unfortunate modifications, I actually don't see any signs of it ever being equipped with a muffler rail and harp guitar. Here's a factory photo showing a Style 15 with only five stop tabs, indicating that they may not have all had this feature, or this feature was offered later on. But since I paid to have this part shipped all the way from Canada, we're going to add it anyway. I started by removing the current harp guitar rail, which I'm sure was originally used as a muffler. I had just made new tabs for this rail last year, but thankfully I was able to safely remove them with a warm iron. That's because I used hide glue. The undo glue. I found a donor rail to use as the new harp guitar in my above ground landfill. This is out of a player piano that gave its life to save others. And found spare brackets that match those used in the photo player. I want this installation to look as original as possible. Alright, much better. I started out with uh, simple green and very, very gently with a very fine scotch bright pad and then followed up with Brasso. Not sponsored. Okay, the new rail for the harp guitar is cleaned up. I've got the scavenged brackets on. Now we can set it to the piano and start seeing where it's going to line left or right. I'm going to use the original pivot point for the muffler, which is here, and I'm going to have to make a little standoff that's going to bridge bridge the gap since this donor rail is so much more narrow, but I can only bring it over a little bit so I don't hit this, uh, this valve box here. So I'll make a short one for this side and an even longer one for the other end where there's a bigger gap. These are the two motors that drive the rolls, but they're kind of in the way over here, so I'm going to pull them out so we have more room to work. Okay, I've got my standoffs in, one on either side, to get this rail aligned where I want it. Okay, this rail is shimmed up where it's going to be at the rest position, and I've got, or I think, my new muffler rail position is going to be. I made a temporary mounting for it. I don't want to drill any holes until I'm sure I got things where they need to be. Here on the base side of the cabinet, you can see, I think whoever worked on this piano last was uh, into duck hunting. A lot of extra holes here that shouldn't be there. Beautiful. Okay, I've moved this about three different times, but finally got in a place where it works well and doesn't interfere with the tuning pins. 
So now that these are both in a good spot, I think I can start mocking up the, uh, the lift arm control for this. With both rails in the piano, we need a way to actuate them up and down. Last year I acquired this photo player piano, or what was left of it, to use for parts. Luckily it had most of its muffler rail parts left, so I can use them as a guide. Next we need to duplicate the rod that physically moves the rail. The connection point on this lift rod is, well, uh, it's hokey. I asked a friend how the muffler rail in his photo player worked, and he sent me this. Yes, it's a stick pick, but this design is much more straightforward, so I copied that instead. With all the parts made, I could mock things up with two-sided tape. I also had to copy the pneumatic that moves the rail. I used an original from the piano as a pattern. This setup requires a spring to lift the rail away from the hammers when not in use. I had never made springs of this size before, so uh, things were a little tense at times. Spring is in the air. Boing. With the spring and pneumatic made, I had to open up the bottom of the piano for access. I always feel like I'm going to crush these tiny little organ pipes when I'm taking them out. So I'm gentle. Now I could put the new pneumatic in, or the, the pneumatic in, and get the new lift rod in place. I could cut the rod to fit. As usual, this involved guessing. Eh. Sure. Oh, and I glued these on when you weren't looking. Okay, everything's in place and mocked up. Let's, uh... Take it for a test spin. And now with all the harp guitar parts roughed in and the muffler rail in place, I experimented with different thicknesses of felt for the muffler rail. Too thin. I settled on this medium weight woven felt. It didn't work. It was interfering with the tuning pins and the harp guitar rail. Dang. I eventually came up with this. A thick strip of felt suspended by thin bellows cloth. The cloth allows clearance between the lower rail and the tuning pins. Yay! 
Now I can work on the actuator for the upper rail. <laughs> I was looking for that. So right now the slower one is hooked up to the soft base, so we'll have to switch these two around. This one they were using for the mandolin will move soft base control up to this one and move the harp guitar down to here because we need a spring that pulls. And that spring is quite long, so we'll we'll switch these linkages around. And you can see there's it's been some modifying, unfortunately, in the past. Somebody had a sustain unit in here at one point, and American photo players never had a sustain unit, so I took that out. But thankfully, that gives us room now for this spring. Boing. I use the same lift parts on this side, and with everything taped in place and working, it's time to replace tape with hardware. Okay, this is really the scary part. Drilling holes in a hundred-year-old irreplaceable historic relic. Here goes nothing. Well, there were a couple times there that I wasn't sure if this was even going to work, but we got it. Not only have we maximized the functionality of the piano, but we've put some original parts back into service. Overall, I'm really proud of how this turned out, and I think it looks like it was there the whole time, which is my goal. Next episode, we'll take a look at some of the percussion elements, or missing percussion elements, of the Style 15. That episode is sure to be a hit. Stay tuned. If you want, no pressure. Thank you.